Today I'm going to share with you three different ways that slide audio can be imported into your Adobe Captivate project. So I've set up a couple of blank projects here just to uh, start things off with. If you start with a single slide by itself and you start to build your project and import uh, slide audio, uh, you won't really see much of an interface at all. You'll see, you know, just the import of your first slide and then of course it will automatically extend the length of that slide to match the duration of the audio. But let's say for example you've got let's say the shell of your e-learning course built and you've got let's say a title slide and a few extra content slides. If I do the same thing again here and select audio from my media icon, uh, we'll select the same audio file uh, knowing that there are a bunch of blank slides after this slide, Adobe Captivate will present you with a couple of options using this Audio Import Options dialog. The first option is to show the slide for the same duration or for the same amount of time as the audio file. And that's what we've already done here. So if I select that and then I can move on to the next slide and import all of my individual audio recordings one by one. Um, but there are other options as you saw there. So let's take a look at the second option. I'm going to go into the media drop down icon here and select audio. And we'll choose uh, a different audio file this time just for fun. And it imports it. And then of course it gives you this option again. So I can distribute the audio file over several slides. That's the second option that's available to me. And if I click on OK, that's going to open up the slide audio window where you'll see the waveform here. And what you'll be able to do is to use this icon here, which is the start next slide at the cursor position. Alternatively, you can use Control S. So you can listen to your audio uh, playback by using the play pause button here and then select a point on that timeline and simply start next slide at this cursor point here. So slide two will now begin here and we can do the same thing for slide three and so on. If I actually scroll all the way over, if I've only selected two of those points, You'll actually see at some point a marker for slide four, and it's well into the silence, if you will, of this particular audio file. So it won't actually get included in this uh, batch audio import. But if I click on save and I close this window, you'll notice that, of course, slide one, two, and three now have audio attached to them. Slide four does not because I left that by itself. And if you go to the library panel, you'll actually see the original audio file as it was imported, plus three clips representing the three audio files that are in slides one, two, and three. You can actually delete the original imported uh, audio if you wish uh, at some point during the uh, construction of your e-learning project. You may want to select unused items and then hit the trash can to get rid of all the extra stuff that you don't need. Now, if I start again with a very similar um, blank project here, this is going to be the third option. Let's go into the media drop down icon and select the audio option there. And we'll just uh, choose one of these audio narration files at random. And we'll choose the third option. Now this might be good if you had say a slideshow or something like that. The third option is going to retain the current slide duration and distribute the audio files over several of uh, several slides. So if I do this, interestingly enough, what it does, uh, each of these slides is three seconds long. Uh, I'm guessing that this audio narration file is longer than 12 seconds. So we'll see what happens. Click on OK. And as, uh, as I expected, what we got was three seconds of the audio on slide one, same thing for slide two and three, and then the remainder of the audio file uh, was put on slide four. Con coincidentally, it was only three seconds long, but it would have actually extended this final slide 
uh, to a longer period if it needed to. Uh, in this case, though, it doesn't save the original import um, of that particular slide audio. You'll just have, of course, the four items in your library. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.